Hey everyone, welcome back to chapter 16.5. We're still talking about surface area integrals. And in this video, we're going to cover uh, the case when you have an explicit form and an implicit form um, all in one problem. So we're going to use the explicit formula and the implicit formula. These guys up here. Um, yeah, uh, these guys up here. Uh, and we're going to use them on the same problem. So. Uh, without further ado, let's hop in and let's draw a line here so I can scroll down a little bit. Okay, um, we're going to take a look at uh, 16.5, uh, number 45, which is the following problem. Uh, you want to find the area of the uh, portion of the paraboloid. X is equal to 4 um, minus Y squared minus Z squared that lies above um, the ring uh, 1 is less than or equal to y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4 uh, in the yz plane. Okay, so to give you an idea what this guy looks like, because this isn't your typical paraboloid, uh, if you draw your axes, uh, this one is pointing in the negative direction, okay, because you got minus y squared minus z squared, and uh, it, it, it opens up in the x direction. So it's going to look like this. Uh, it's going to look like that. Right, and then at the end, sure, something like that. But it's opening in the negative x direction, okay? And uh, that's our paraboloid. And then in the yz plane, we want to find uh, the surface area that lies above this ring. Not really sure how to draw that, but essentially there's going to be like a section where um, it, it lies above that ring. So, okay, um, so how do we do this? Well, we can use the uh, implicit formula, right, which is the double integral over the region of uh, the gradient of f, right, over the gradient of f dot p, and then dA. Okay, so uh, let's try this one. Let's, let's try this formula and uh, see how it goes. So we'll get the following. So, um, right, so remember f has to, if f has to be a function of x, y, z, it has to be equal to constant or big F. So we take that guy and we take our equation over paraboloid and we move everything over to one side. So now I have x plus y squared plus z squared is equal to four. And therefore I can take the gradient, uh, gradient of f, um, and that's equal to one, two y, two z. Okay, and what's the magnitude of that? Well, the magnitude of f is equal to um, root uh, one plus four y squared plus four z squared. Okay, and uh, yeah, so now what? Now, okay, so down here then, I got the double integral over my region of, uh, so it looks like I got root one plus four y squared plus four z squared uh, over, uh, what's the gradient then of f dot p? So first of all, what's my p, right? Well, p, if you remember from up here, and I was having a hell of a time trying to explain, uh, P is going to be I, J, or K, depending on the orientation of your surface. So it's 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1. And uh, here's our surface, right? And notice that uh, that our region lies in the, X, in, in the Y, Z plane. That means the region we're integrating over, this R, uh, is DA is going to be D, Y, D, Z, or D, Z, D, Y. Okay? So keeping that in mind, our regions in the yz plane, that means that, oh, look, uh, my region, this uh, paraboloid, is actually going to end up in a circle in the yz plane, and that means that, uh, well, my normal then has to be pointed in the x direction, because if I'm in the yz plane, my normal is going to be in the x direction, and then so because th that's because my region is in the yz plane, so the normal's in the x direction. Uh, for example, if my region were in the xy plane, right, then my region would be lying flat in the xy plane. And here, it's easy to see that then the normal would be in the z direction, right? So, however, this is not the case of our problem. Our problem is that this region lies in the yz plane, and so uh, this needs to be a squared right here. Uh, since this region lies in the yz plane, we our normal is going to point in the x direction. And I've repeated that like five times. Hopefully that makes sense. 
essentially you just choose the direction that you're not. So since there's no x in the yz plane, uh, your normal is going to be in the x direction. And since there's no z in the xy plane, um, in that case, your normal would be in the z direction. But anyhow, so p then uh, is going to be uh, 1, 0, 0. So then del f dot p is 1, 2, y, 2, z dotted with 1, 0, 0, since p, again, in x direction. Oh my goodness, what is going on? So that means p is 1, 0, 0. And this dot product then is equal to 1. And the absolute value of it is also equal to 1. So that means I'm dividing by 1 on the bottom. And then for dA, I'm doing a combination of dy, dz, or dz, dy, depending on how I want to integrate it. But so let's leave that as dA. So right now, I'm stuck with the, now this triple integral of root 1 plus 4y squared plus 4z squared. Um, dA over the region. And remember, my, my region is this guy right here. It looks like circles in the yz plane. Um, and so I have circles, and here I have like y squared and z squared. So it kind of makes sense to use polar coordinates, but in the yz plane. So I know this um, to you guys may seem uh, like, like hella weird, but it, it works, right? Because let's think about it. Instead of doing x equals r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta, what if I just renamed x to be z, right? I just straight up say, oh, I'm, my x variable is now called z. What happens? Well, y squared plus z squared is still equal to r squared, right? If you work that out, you'll still get y squared plus z squared is equal to r squared. And that means dy dz will become, right, used to be, like dx dy or dy dx would become r dr d theta but notice dr d theta doesn't have depend on x's so i could have dz dy become r dr d theta or i can have dy dz become r dr d theta so i can still make this substitution uh, in this problem so uh, polar sub in the yz plane okay so this polar sub still works and what do I get? Now I just get the double integral of, this becomes uh, one plus four r squared, and then I have r uh, dr d theta, right? Because dA becomes dr d theta. Notice, when we're dealing with explicit or implicit forms, uh, we end up with dA, right? We end up with dA, while here we ended up with d sigma, which automatically gives us du dv, but when we have dA, we can then convert dA into polar or something as well. So that's why in this case we need the R. Okay, so that's why in this case we need the R because we're going from dA, not d sigma. All right, in the case of d sigma, you don't need, you're not converting. Here, this is a convert, this is a conversion, right? So that's just a polar sub in the yz plane. Okay, and now what? Now, what are my bounds? Well, y squared plus z squared, right? Uh, that's r squared. So r squared is going to be 1 through 4. So it's going to be 1 r squared 4 or 1 r 2. So r is going to be 0 between 1 and 2. And uh, theta, well, nothing is restricting the yz plane in this case, right? Because theta, look, theta is in uh, the y and z coordinates, but up here, right? Um, up here, there's nothing restricting uh, y and z. It just says uh, we're lying in uh, y squared plus z squared. They're just circles. So there's no restriction on y and z. So we assume theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And now we get this integral. Okay. And yeah. Um, now we have to integrate this to get our surface area. And what is that? This might look hella suspicious. Or uh, you might recognize this integral because it's this integral uh, up here. Uh, it's literally the exact same one, and you'll get then this guy, uh, pi over 6, uh, 17 root 17 minus 5 root 5. So this is equal to uh, pi over 6 times 17 root 17 minus 5 root 5. It's the exact same integral from above. There's a reason why I made you guys do this problem uh, on your own time, 15, 16, 5, 24. Uh, it just happens that this guy gives you the exact same answer.
Okay, so 16548 gives you the exact same answer, even though it's a different region. And, uh, and we found it using the implicit formula way, right, by uh, letting everything equal to uh, C. All right, now, I could have jumped this step right away. And how could, have I, how could I have done that? I wouldn't have to have messed with this P, right? Uh, and it's because I could have done this using the explicit method. And what do I mean by that, right? Remember, explicit method was if I had, I said Z is equal to some function little f of x, y, or at least that's what I think I said. Yeah, if Z is equal to x, y, f, y, then I can just take, and uh, then d sigma would have been equal to, then uh, d sigma would have been equal to root f of x squared plus f of y squared um, dA, right? In this case, um, here, right, uh, this, this is actually d sigma is actually equal to um, this guy. So d sigma is actually equal to this integral, um, where the integral of d sigma, well, d sigma is equal to this guy in the implicit case, All right? So d sigma is equal to that guy implicitly. Okay, so that's what we did first. But down here, if you do the explicit method, look, if z is a function of f of x, y, then d sigma is equal to this plus one. Uh, da. So, 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 um, how does that apply to our problem? Well, it applies to our problem because, because I don't have z is equal to f of x, y, but I have x is equal to f of y, z, right? I just need to change some variables around. In our case, I had f is equal to, or x is equal to the function of y and z. So, now, where I had um, z's, I just essentially replaced them with, uh, or where I had x's, I just replaced them with z's, right? And so instead of this being uh, f root f, uh, the partial of x squared, this becomes, right, the root partial of, well, x was the first variable, so it went there. Um, so I'm gonna write then y is the first variable, so it goes here. So this will be f partial y squared, plus then z was the second, uh, y was the second variable here, and that was y there. So in my case, z is the second variable. Now we go here, so f partial z squared plus one dA, and now dA is gonna be dy dz, um, or dz dy, where up here it was dx dy dy, or dy dx, right? So again, uh, you can make the switch, and then that makes it a lot easier because look, x was equal to uh, four minus uh, y squared minus z squared, right? And so uh, that means f was equal to four minus y squared minus z squared, and then d sigma is equal to that. So, sorry, I forgot the equal sign for d sigma right here. So what's f partial x? f partial x is, uh, or we're not doing x, f partial y is equal to negative two y, f partial z is equal to negative two z, and then d sigma then um, would be equal to uh, the root of negative two y squared plus negative two z squared plus one dA, which is equal to root four uh, y squared plus four z squared plus one dA. And look at that, four y squared, four z squared plus one dA. That's exactly what we had up here, right? That's, that is exactly what we had four y squared plus four z squared plus one dA. So uh, implicit or explicit should get you the exact same answers uh, for both problems. And uh, yeah, so uh, use whatever one you're more comfortable with. Um, sometimes you can only use implicit uh, because you might not have z is equal. So it might not be like x or like, it might not be like x is equal to this, but it might be like x like the square root of x is equal to, uh, equal to some equation. And then in that case, it might be a little hard to try and use uh, the explicit formula and because you have to get a singular uh, x or a singular y or a singular z, right? Because the explicit formula here, you need a singular variable. So, so uh, yeah, so that's then implicit and explicit surface area. And again, uh, we have the answer um, because well, we did this integral, or you guys should have done this integral uh, in a previous problem. And it's, it's by coincidence that it 
it's by complete coincidence they ended up being the same integral like that doesn't usually happen i just chose it um in these videos just so that i could do less work because then i can be like oh we did this integral before so i was being lazy uh but yeah so now you guys know how to do implicit and explicit uh for surface area and again it's all it all comes down to uh it all comes down to these three equations up here essentially um, if you want to parameterize, if you want to, uh, if you have a surface given explicitly or implicitly, um, and sometimes you know the last two are interchangeable, sometimes they're not. In our case, it was interchangeable because I could write the implicit surface explicitly. Um, you can always make an explicit surface implicit, right? Because because you can just move this z over to the the side, and then you, now you have. A function of x y z is equal to a constant however you don't always uh, make an implicit surface explicit because this function of x y z's may not have a singular z or a singular y or like a singular x uh, inside of it so keep that in mind uh, hopefully I didn't confuse you guys too much uh, if I did uh, rewatch all these videos I guess um, or you know come to my office hours email me whatever uh, I'll, I'll explain these guys uh, in more theoretical detail uh, in recitations and uh, review sessions and yeah hopefully this was helpful to you guys um, especially this part when finding uh, what P was right where was that whole fiasco yeah this guy right here um, this guy finding P uh, this was pretty annoying but whatever um, uh, essentially you just choose the direction that uh, you just choose the direction that you uh, that that it's not included in your region so yz plane we're in the x direction all right i've been dwelling on random things too long let's just move on to chapter 16 6 uh, surface integrals it's pretty much the same thing um a little bit different but it shouldn't be too long of a section i believe and then we'll get to stokes and divergence the last two sections in this class